to serve him in spirit and in truth. Amen. Amen. I want you guys to join me today. We're going to sing a song that I'm sure all of you know. And we're going to ask God to not pass us up. Amen. To pass us not. Amen. Amen. <laughs>
Amen. 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 Good morning, good morning, good morning. Everybody went on vacation at the same time. Amen. Amen. I hope they got a group party going on somewhere. Amen. Ain't nothing like a retreat without the pastor. You can do all kinds of stuff. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Dance on the brooms and everything. <laughs> Amen. But I'm so glad to be here today. I'm so glad to have each one of you. I'm so glad to know that God is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. Amen. First, we give honor to God, our Creator, Jesus, our Savior, and the Holy Ghost, our Keeper. Amen. To each one of you for just thinking of not robbery to come and fellowship and be with each other to hear and learn more about God and just find a way that we can learn how to serve Him better. Amen. It's just a blessing to be here today. Uh, any visitors, I see some visitors. Visitors, uh, tell us who you are and where you come from. Who got you? <laughs> What's up? Uh, my father. Um, I don't see him here right now. But, um, Amen. I think he made him run a little late. But What's your father's name? Rome, Rome War. Okay, all right, okay. All right. Amen. Rome, amen. 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 Yeah, brother Jerome. Ah, I ain't gonna go there on that one. <laughs> <laughs> I'll leave that one alone, amen. Amen, amen. Well, we want to welcome you here to uh, Northside. We pray that you come again. We pray that while you're here, that you hear something that will inspire you to want to live a better life and be more like Christ. I can say uh, I want to warn you up front that I, I'm, I'm not your everyday typical preacher, so uh, if I say something kind of off the wall, off the chain, uh, just charge it to my head and not my heart, okay? Amen. We just want to say thank everyone for all your prayers that's been prayed over the past week. We've got a lot of sick and shut in. Uh, everywhere, and just continue to pray, continue to, to just let, just continue to know in your heart that God has everything under control, amen. Even though when you feel like things are just out of control, and you, you know, I, I give you an example, I was, uh, I was helping my daughter with an event yesterday, uh, they was, uh, uh vaxxing up, uh, uh, Atlanta, and, uh, they was, uh, doing the homeless and the sick and homeless and drug alcoholics and things like that and anybody that would show up. So, uh, but while I was there, one of my daughters asked me to stop and pick up a Coca-Cola before I get there. She said, Daddy, all they got here is water. You need to bring a, a Coca-Cola. I said, I'll bring you a Coca-Cola, but I'm gonna charge you extra for it, you know? I gotta pay for my time to stop, you know? So I stopped at the little gas station, and uh, I stopped at the gas station, and, and of course, you know, one Coke, you know, on Stewart Avenue uh, costs you about $2 or something, you know. <laughs> so I, I said, well, I'd be better off buying a, a 12 pack for $5.99, you know. So I grabbed a 12 pack, I went up to the counter, and I get up to the counter, and the gentleman's in front of me, people behind me, and when I, when I paid for the 12 pack, the Lord laid it in my heart and to ask the lady, is everything okay? I asked the lady, was everything okay? And she said, no, it's not okay. She said, I've got sickness in my family. I had to come to work today because I've got to take care of my family. Everything is just falling apart in my life right now. Before she could get that out of her mouth good, she broke out crying. And I let her cry for a while. And I stood there. I didn't care how long the line got. When she finished, I said, do you mind if I pray with you? I said, can you put your hand up on the glass? She put her hand up on the glass. Glory, hallelujah. We began to pray. And when the prayer was over, there was a man behind me that had a six-pack of beer. He had took his hat off. He said, Amen. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> unless you know unless you know that there's a lot of hurt people out there and God, God wants to use us she said you know what thank you very much I needed that so when I got where I was going with my daughter with Coca-Cola I told her I ain't going to charge her now you know God you can have it for free you know? <laughs> it paid for itself amen <laughs> so, so I'm praying God today that we get a word from the Lord that will inspire us to want to be more like him and just 
be able to listen to them and do what needs to be done because uh, we're going to ask our stewards now if they would come for our tithes and offerings and as they come I would like to say I want to ask everyone here if you would just take a moment out of your schedule next week and I want you to write a letter to a lady that goes to this church, Fran, y'all probably know her. Her daughter's husband was in a, uh, uh, he works on electricity, but he, he was high voltage shocked uh, about a month or two ago. And they had to amputate one of his arm hands, and, and he's going, I mean, it's, and so they're going to be down there for about a year. But, but they say he's, he's making good progress, okay? But what I like for you to do is take a moment out of your schedule and just write a, just a little kind word to her and to him. And what we're going to do is bring those back on next Sunday, and we're going to put them all in one big envelope, and we're going to send it to them on Father's Day. How about that? And that way, just let them know that the church family is thinking about them and that we're encouraged that encourage them to know that God is still blessing them. Okay, if y'all do that for me, that will be highly appreciated. Amen. They've got it up there. That's the DD Force. That's the name. So just write the names down and just uh, just jot down some words, okay? Amen. Amen. Uh, if you would, uh, Mark, give us a prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, as we come to you today, we thank you for worshiping your house. Mm -hmm. Be fed by your words. Yes, yes, yes. Build a hedge around the pasture. Yes. Satan can't penetrate through that. Yes, yes. Your Lord, be with us, Pastor. Yes. Give us your words. Your words. Yes, yes. yes. Your Lord, be with those who have to give. Yes. Yes. Use this offering to the upbuilding of thy kingdom. Yes, yes. Yes, oh glory, hallelujah. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Oh, Mark, don't cry, ain't he? <laughs> amen. Amen, amen, about it, amen. Amen, ain't nobody happy but Don and Cleo. <laughs> amen, amen, amen about it all. Uh, we, we got to meet your son. Yeah, I'm talking to you. <laughs> we met your family. Okay. Amen. 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 Yeah. Amen. He said they come. <laughs> Amen. Guys, I'm excited about the word today because it really is going to help us a lot. Uh, one thing about uh, uh, as God was working on this word for this week. It was an eye-opener. Uh, it's always an eye-opener to me because I have to carry the message before it's delivered. So as he began to build this message, it, it was uh, it's a message that really, I tell you what, it reminds me of society as a whole. It, it does. Because at, at, as society has it for us, we spend a lot of our time trying to define success. We spend a lot of our time trying to figure out what is the true meaning of success. And oftentimes we spend a lot of our time chasing after success like a dog chasing after a car. And when we catch it, we don't even know what to do with it. And we don't even know, you know, should we run at the next car? You know? And, and catch it. And, and so often we spend our whole life chasing, running after success only because we haven't taken time to define what success really is. And today we're going to look at a man who, who, who was doing that and a man who did it successfully according to society. He was he was he was a he was a young man. Yeah, we're gonna call we're gonna call this man today Mr. Clean. Okay. <laughs> and so we're gonna refer to him today as Mr. Clean. Mr. Clean was a young man. Mr. Clean was very successful in life. What make what he in other words, what we call success, he had a lot of money, amen. He was rich. 
He was young and he lived a moral life. That sounds like Mr. Clean round up, don't it? I mean, he treated folks right, did the right things to everybody. He did what was right done when it came to, you know, being marriageable and, and, and treating his brother man's right. He did all that. Had a loot of money he could ride in any car he wanted to ride in. And he was young. He wasn't no old man, you understand. He got his money early, amen. He was a young, rich man. Not only that, he was a ruler on top of that. That means that he had folks working what? Under him. But his name was Mr. Clean. Mr. Clean messed around one day and seen Jesus talking to some kids. And when he seen him talking to these kids, this is what Jesus told the kids. Jesus said, now, I don't want y'all to forsake none of these little ones to come unto me. He said, these kids are very special to me. Because these kids represent the kingdom of God. And as this rich man stood back in a corner called Mr. Clean, you know, he's standing back checking things out. Well, Mr. Clean checked things out. And he said, you know what? Hmm. This guy keep talking about this kingdom thing. You know, I've got plenty of money. I treat people right. I'm a ruler. I'm young. But I need to know more about this kingdom thing. So the Bible says, if we turn to Matthew's chapter, chapter 9, and turn to Matthew's chapter 9, Matthew chapter 9, and we're going to begin at Matthew chapter 9, and we're going to talk about Mr. Clean. Anybody know any Mr. Cleans? Yeah, you do. Look in the mirror. <laughs> He's your best friend. <laughs> Mr. Clean. We're going to go to Matthew chapter 10. Verse 17 through 27. Matthew chapter 10, verse 17 through 27. Talks about a man. I'm only paraphrasing this. It talks about a man. Matthew chapter 17. We're going to read it together. And when he was gone forth into the way, there came one running and kneeled to him and asked him, Good master, what shall I do that I may inherit eternal life? Verse 17, 18 says, uh, And Jesus said unto him, Why callest thou me good? There is none good but one that is God. Amen. And verse 19, Thou knowest the commandments. Do not commit adultery. Do not kill. Do not steal. Do not bear false witness. Defraud not. Honor thy father and thy mother. Verse 20. And he answered and said unto him, Master, man, I've done all this since I was a young man. What are you talking about? I got all this stuff down. I got it. And Jesus did behold him, love him, and said unto them, One thing thou lacketh, go thy way, sell whatsoever thou had, give it to the poor, and thou shalt have treasures in heaven, and come, take up thy cross, and follow me. The next verse. We're going to stop on this one. And he said, he was sad at the sand and went away grieved for he had great possessions. We're going to call him Mr. Clean. Mr. Clean had it going on. Mr. Clean was rich. Mr. Clean was young. Mr. Clean was morally right because he kept all of those, uh, I call it the second table of the commandments. He kept all of the second tables of the commandment that applied to his fellow man. So Mr. Clean, in the eyes of society, he was the what? He was the bomb. Greg, he was the eye candy of a Christian. <laughs> he was what a Christian really looked like, amen. In other words, he was something that could fool anybody but Christ. He had all the right things to say. He, did, he knew how to quote the scripture. He had plenty of money to put in time because he made a bunch, amen. He was young and he, he, was, he was pleasant to look at with the eyes. He was no ugly guy. He was cool. He was all that dumb. But he realized that he was missing something. 
when you start hearing what Jesus was teaching about that kingdom. You know how it is uh, when we, 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 we have a whole lot, but, but the Bible said the eyes of man is never full. He says always looking for something else. And his spirit began, his conscience began to speak to him and say, you know what, you're missing something. Why don't you go and talk to this Jesus and ask him about the kingdom that he is inquiring about. Now here's what happened. Just picture it. Here Jesus talking to the kids. Then he walks away. Jesus is just chilling. You know, chilling with his boys. You know, disciples, his boys. They just having conversation. And all of a sudden, Dante runs up. <laughs> I know it. Fall down on his knees. And start saying, good master. <laughs> what must I do to enter the kingdom of heaven? Well, by that time, all eyes are on Dante, okay? <laughs> Number one, because he don't broke on the scene out of nowhere. The Bible says he ran up to Jesus, fell down on his knees, and asked a question. Here's the catcher. He had the right approach. He had the right question, but he had the wrong motive. <laughs> Have you ever came to Jesus with the right approach? You know what I mean. Mm -hmm. Go down on your knees. <laughs> you got the right approach. <laughs> you got the right question. Lord, I need you for so and so and so. Mm -hmm. But your motives are not right. See, the only person that can determine your motives is God because the Bible says that only God knows the heart of man. In other words, I remember back at our home church, when I was a young boy, I used to listen to them go to pray. Man, they would pray so good. <laughs> It'll have me, God, boy, I'd be wanting to go down there and give my hand to God, amen. <laughs> and then the same day, I see them down in the Miss Missouri house getting drunk, smoking dogs, doing whatever they want to do, amen. They had the right approach. They said the right thing, but their motives wasn't right. Mr. Clean. <laughs> we ain't got no Mr. Clean here at, at, at Northside, do we? <laughs> Won't make sure. <laughs> well, Mr. Clean, well, Mr. Clean said the right thing, had the right approach, he said the right words, but his motive wasn't right. So the Bible said, and Jesus looked at him and said, why do you call me good? What Jesus was saying to him is, you are saying the right thing, but you really don't even know the meaning behind what you're saying. See, oftentimes we, we call God God and we call him almighty. We call him omnipotent. We call him all providing. We call him all these names, but really do we really know? Don't boy, you're going to get me happy in here. Do you really know what these names mean? Are you really trusting them for what they are? If he's going to be your all provider, are you calling him the all provider and still not trusting him to provide for you? Are you calling him a God that's able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that you can actually think, but yet you don't know what you're saying? In other words, you're using your mouth, but your heart is not there. And you're wondering why things are not happening. So Jesus, you know, one thing about I love about Jesus, he had to be, he had to be either a brother or knew a lot of them. <laughs> he, he came back just like a brother would, Mother Knight. He said, "Yeah, I hear you." <laughs> hey, that's how we come back. Yeah, I hear you. I hear what you're saying. But, 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 but. Have you been keeping the commandments, you understand? Because I hear what you're saying. And, and, and the reason why he asked him that question, because God will ask your question to raise your spiritual awareness. Oftentimes, see, this man, he was so low and he was so caught up into the worldly things that his spiritual awareness was way off track. 
So God had to bring him back on track to put him in a spiritual realm. Have God ever had to guide you back on track? And sometimes it don't feel good. <laughs> sometimes it don't sound good. He might ask you a question that knocked you right in the face. And this, here's, a, here's a catch. Or sometimes he might have somebody <laughs> to ask you a question that knocked you in the face. Amen. <laughs> and what he's doing, he's trying to get you back on spiritual track. Because see, the man was off spiritual track because his mind was not asking for the kingdom of God for spiritual reasons. He was asking for the kingdom of God because he didn't have it. And he thought he could get it through Christ. And he thought he had the means to get it. You know how it is when we got a lot of money? In America, you can buy anything. And don't tell me you can't. I promise you. You pull out a billion dollars and say the first billion people that show up <laughs> get a million. <laughs> people will camp out for a whole year <laughs> just to be first. <laughs> Because money has a tendency to take us off of our spiritual course. And it puts us into a worldly mind frame. So Jesus asked the man, well, have you been keeping the commandments? Notice the commandments that he asked him, has he been keeping? For those Bible scholars in here, there are two sets of commandments that makes up the commandments. Okay. There's one, he asked him the commandments that apply to your brother man. And he said, yeah, I've kept all those commandments. Man, I don't lie. I don't bear false witness. Well, I've done that since I was a little boy. Mr. Clean had, well, his pride came up on that one. Amen. You know how it is? When you think you already the best, a best, and then somebody asks you a question that you know you got the answer to, and you think you that. Now your pride go from here to here. Now your head so big it can't even get in the door. Good, amen. You know how Christian folks are. Don't ask them a scripture that they know about. <laughs> They're quoted with their head so big. He quoted it, and he said, "Yeah, I've done that since I was a little boy." But Christ looked at him, and he loved him. He loved him, and I need to clarify the word love here. The word love here means that he had compassion on him. Sometimes Christ will love you and have compassion on you for your ignorance. Not because he loved them to love him. It was because it was because he knew that the man was doing it for the what? Wrong reason. And he loved on him to let him know, even though you did it for the wrong reason, I still what? I still love you for it, amen. I still love you, brother Don, that you don't backbite and cheat on your wife. I still love you, Don, that you try to live a righteous life. I still love you, brother Greg, that you don't go around lying on everybody, putting folk business in the street. I still love you, Sister Whitehead, because you ain't no backbiter, backstabber, telling folk business in the street. I still love you. But he said, oh, but you lack one thing. Now here's the catch. The catch is, and Jesus loved on him. Then he said, you lack one thing. This is what I love about this whole story. In other words, Jesus then switches from being what your relationship with man is to what your relationship with God is. Because, see, the second part of the commandments deals with your relationship with man. The first part of the commandments deal with your relationship with God. Because he said, love the Lord your what? God. Have no other God what? Before me. Do not use the Lord thy name in what? Vain. He, he went on. So now he's, he said, okay, you got the second half of it right. But Mr. Clean, you're missing the most important part. You know what I'm saying? It's like this. It's like buying a car. And you can't even get keys to fit it. 
<laughs> uh, let, me, let me go farther, amen. It is like, it's like uh, having a house and 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 and, 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 and you don't own the land that it's sent on. <laughs> In other words, yeah, you own the house, but you can't enjoy it because you should have got the land what? First. <laughs> And then built the house on the land, amen. Now here's this man, he don't got the second part right, but he don't have the first part right. I'm finna go down the street now. Could that be many of us today? We've got the second part right. We know how to treat one another. Even the, even the winos on the street know how to what? Treat one another. Even the drug addicts knows how to what? Treat one another. Even, even the gang members respect each other's what? Territory. We got the second part of it what? Down pat. But he said that ain't the part that's important. The part that's important is the part that you're missing. He said you like the most important part. And that is that your spiritual life is not in the right order. He said, I need you to, he said, I don't want you to stop working for riches. I don't want you to stop loving who you love. I don't want you to stop doing the right thing. I don't want you to stop earning a living. I don't want you to stop gaining riches. But I want to make sure that you have the first thing in priorities in the right place. Amen. Because if you ain't got your priorities in the right place, what you have is a quantity of life, but you don't have the quality of life. And so many folks today got the quantity of life. They've got big homes, nice cars, plenty fat bank accounts, lots of stock, kids doing well, wear fine clothes. They got the quantity of life. But they don't have the what? Quality of life. Jesus said, you got the quantity of life, but you don't have the quality of life. Because, see, only God can give you the what? The quality of life because the quality of life is divine by the spirit man himself. Because the spirit man himself is your conscience. It's the thing that talks to you. It's the thing that tells you what to do and who to love and who not to love. It talks to you and gives you direction in life. It talks to you and tells you what, what you need to do and not do and when to do and what to do. And, and, be, and having a quantity, I've seen so many people have everything. I, I, I don't do Facebook and nothing like that too tough. My wife do, but I don't. But anyway, she'll tell me about it. she said, yeah, they got nice in there, but they're miserable. Why? Because they got the quantity of life, but they're missing the quality of life. This man realized he had the quantity of life, but he wanted the quality of life. And Jesus said, in order to get the quality of life, I need you to sell everything you got and give it to the Lord and come and follow me. Here's the catcher. What he was saying was, he was saying these words. He was saying, you can't serve two masters. He said, either you're going to love the one and hate the other. He said, you can't have money here and attach God on the back of it. Amen. In other words, today people want to live a life the way they want to live it any kind of way and they want to attach God to it. Uh-oh. Did I go down your road? I think I did. Because it happens. It happens to even your pastor. Sometimes I want to say, baby, I'm, you know what? I'm going to go play golf today instead of, what, 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 wait, I need to put a light on. Why? Because I want what it has to offer, but I want to attach God to it. Yes, I want a good job, but I want to attach God to it. Yes, I want a good life, but I want to attach God to it. God said, no, I want you to have me first and then attach that to it. Amen. In other words, God is saying, let me be the engine, not the caboose. Let me be the head and not the tail. The Bible says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all that other stuff. But he'll what? He'll add it to you. In other words, God has to come first. You know, I, I've seen so many people 
spend their lives trying to be successful and then they spend they get there according to their definition and then they spend the rest of their lives trying to stay there mm -hmm. and life becomes very miserable for them. it becomes miserable to the point that 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 they they don't want nobody to know that they made it and maybe lost it but I wouldn't care if you know if I made it and lost it. But what I would care about it if you knew that I didn't know Jesus and lost it. Amen. That would be my concern. Amen. amen. People are more concerned about what they can gather than what they can share about Jesus. Amen. amen. So I love what Jesus said. He said it would be more easier for a camel to get through the eye of a needle than it is for a rich man to enter the kingdom of heaven. What is he saying, Pastor? He's saying because you have your money as your priority. You can't see what God wants you to do because your money got you blind. Here's a catcher. I like the way uh, Luke put it. Luke put it with a whole different spin on it. And Luke was saying, well, one thing that I like it. Could it be your job hindering you from having a closer relationship with God? Could it be your kids hindering you from having a closer relationship with God? Put a step on your toe. Could it be your husband or your wife hindering you? from having a close relationship with God. He said, one thing thou lacketh. He said, whatever it is, and I'm going to pose a question out there. Whatever it is that's hindering you from having a close relationship with God, he's saying, with me, all things are possible. He said, I'm not telling you to get rid of all your money. I'm not asking you to get rid of your wife or your husband. I'm not asking you to get rid of your kids or anything. I'm asking you to just put me first. Mm -hmm. The reason why you're struggling, think about it. Could it be that you stop putting God first? The answer to your solution to your problem that you've been dealing with for so long and you've been trying to figure it out for yourself and you've used up all the resources that's possible, that's available to you and the problem still ain't got no better. Why? Because you haven't put God first. He said to us today, all things are possible with Christ. You want to have a successful life? It's possible with Christ. You want to do this? It's possible with Christ. And I'm going to close with this story I, I heard, I read, and it was a funny story, and it was like this. There was a man who was a, an evangelist. And this man always was on the train, and I don't know if some people that live up north, they, they know what riding a train is, you know. That's like a, a normal, everyday thing. It's like getting in your car. <laughs> you understand? <laughs> We, we, we cherish cars around here. They cherish trains, okay? Because trains take you everywhere, okay? That's your, that's your goal. But this guy, he would get on the train, and he would just preach about Jesus. You, you need to get your life together, Brother Waymon. Repent. Are you going to hell? Head first, amen. He would be so loud, he even got a bullhorn on the plane, on the, on the train. You know, on the train, you, you, you meet anybody and everybody on the train. Okay, he's on the train preaching. You need to get your life together. Christ is coming again. This is not the world that he has for us. You're going to die one day. When you die, you might go to hell if your life isn't to, given to Christ. He was just preaching. So a woman finally told him, you need to shut up. <laughs> okay, well. check this out. She told him to shut up. He didn't shut up. He kept on. You need to get your life to Christ. He even moved over closer to her. You need to move, get your life to Christ and get yourself together because you're going to die one day and I want to make sure that your soul ends up in heaven and not hell. But 
She got an evil man. She got up and she started, the guy was sitting there, she started beating him across the head. Tried to take his bull home away from him. Finally, all of a sudden, her son that was on the train with her, he said, Mom, leave him alone. Immediately, Mama started crying. Mama started weeping and crying so hard. You know why? Her son had been deaf Ooh. since he was a baby. Wow. Wow. Glory! Wow. He never talked a day in his life. Wow. And he said, Mom, leave him alone. And she began to cry. It was at that moment she realized the power of God. She realized that with God, all things are possible. Glory! With God, all things are possible. Having said a word his whole life, having spoke a word, but he said to his mama, leave him alone. And his mama immediately began to cry and weep and cry. She had heard her son speak a word since the day he was born. And he was a grown, grown man. She realized then that all things is possible with Christ. From that day forward, she always put God what? First. She put God first. She never doubted him again. No matter what came in her life. No matter what storm showed up, she always remembers that her deaf son talked and it was nobody but the power of God. As we stand to our feet today, I need you to know that whatever you're going through, <laughs> No matter how long you've been in this situation. He told the blind, told his disciples, all things are possible with Christ. I share with you today. There was a man named Jesus. <clears throat> the Bible say he was God's only begotten son. The Bible tells me that he came down through 42 generations. The Bible says he became like more man and he did no wrong. The Bible says he became a living sacrifice for the sins of yours and mine. The Bible says he died on a cross Call Calvary. The Bible said they buried him in a tomb. But the Bible also says on the third day he got up with all power, all power. in his hand. He got up to let us know that we have hope. Yes. This world is not our home. He got up to remind us that he was going away to prepare a place for us. That where he is, there we may be also. But he put a clause in there. Just like he told this one man. He lacked one thing. He said, if thou would confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead, he said, heaven is your home. That's the only prerequisite he put there. You don't have to do nothing. You don't have to try to live right. You don't have to try to get it right. You don't have to try to fix nothing. He said, all I need you to do is just believe that God raised Jesus from the dead for your sins and thou shalt be saved. It's just
just that simple. He said, the rest of it, I'll work it out. An old man did, did uh, Dr. E.D. Hill before we close. He did his thing once, and he had a handful of pencils. And his hand represented the person. And he said, the hand is you. And in his hand, he had a handful of pencils. And he said, that represents all the wrong you picked up along the way. Then he had a handkerchief. And he took the handkerchief and he covered over the pencil and the hand. He said, the handkerchief represents the blood of Christ. He said, once you accept Christ as your Lord and Savior, you're covered in the blood. But there's still some stuff under there that God's got to work out. And today, as we go into communion, I want to remind you that you're covered in the blood. God is still working out the details. But he's saying, don't forget to keep me first. I got the details. I got the small stuff. I know you ain't got it all right now, Dunn. He said, but I'm working out the details. I need you to always remember. Don't let success pull you away from me. Don't let your family pull me, pull you away from me. Don't let your husband or your wife pull you away from me. He said, I need you to keep me first. And I'll work out the what? I'll work out the details, Don. No need to worry about it. What? I got the details under control. Amen. Because that's what I do. Yeah. <laughs> I work out details. Amen. If you hear me, you haven't accepted Christ as your Lord and Savior. I love these famous words. Whosoever will, he said, let him come. And I will in no wise turn you back. If you're here today and you haven't accepted Christ as your Lord and Savior, I say come. Give your hand to Christ. Give your heart to Christ. And he'll work out the details. If you're here today and you say, Reverend, I'm looking for a church home. Well, Northside is always a place that shows forth love. Because that's what we do. We ask you to come. There be none. We ask you to be seated where you are as we go into our second phase of service that we normally do on first Sundays. We have communion. We're going to ask our stewards. Did everybody get a communion cup when they came in? Everybody got one? Everybody have one? If you don't have one, just raise your hand and uh, one of the stewards will get you one. Everybody has one. We ask those who have accepted Christ as their Lord and Savior, who have been baptized, we ask you to join us in communion. <clears throat> but one thing I do at communion, I do, I want you to take this time to just think about nobody but you. Don't think about nobody else. Just think about what God did for you. Don't worry about nobody else. Just take a moment and just, just know in your heart it was nobody but what? Nobody but the Lord. It was my mama, it was my sister, it was my brother. It was nobody but the Lord who shed his blood for my sins. Let us pray. Father, we thank you today. We give you praise, we give you glory, we give you honor. And Father, as we come to your table this evening, we pray now, Lord, that you would just hear our prayers. Forgive us of our sins. Accept us as your children. Take this blood, blood, body and blood that we prepared. Let it be the nourishments of our bodies. Let it be your body. Let it be your blood. It's in Jesus' name, your son, we pray. And the church said amen, 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 and amen, amen. As we go into communion, the Bible says when, right before Christ was crucified, the Bible said they had what we call the last supper. They went into an upper room. The Bible said when supper had ended, he took the bread he broke it and he said, this is my body, which will be broken for you. As often as you eat it, 
do it in remembrance of me and aid together. The Bible say when they had finished, he took the wine and he said, this is the cup of my blood that will be shed for the sins of all. He said, in this cup is a cup of the New Testament. As often as you drink it, he said, do it in remembrance of me. And they drank together. material wealth will shackle us to this earth unless we guard our hearts and set our treasures on God and his everlasting kingdom. I'd like you to take that thought with you because unfortunately we've got to live down here until it's time to go and I want you to live as comfortable as you can. But what I don't want you to do is to get too comfortable. <clears throat> when I went into the ministry back in 1992, an old man that was doing the presby, he gave me a thing. He said, Pastor, when you preach, there's two things your message needs to do. He said, one, it needs to disturb those who are comfortable. Mm -hmm. And it needs to comfort those who are disturbed. Mm -hmm. And I never forgot that. So I hope that this message today disturbs some and comforted others. Mm -hmm. Let us stand to our feet. Mm -hmm. Greg, you gonna get us out of here? Yes, sir. I, I, I run, you're wrong. I'm picking on you. <laughs> Your son's <are> pretty big. <laughs> Man, you got to be careful, boy. <laughs> Man, you look like you about to try it. You look like you got that size about it. You don't get big like that. Yeah. Man, he, looks, he looks very nice. You guys come back to see us again, okay? Y'all live in the area? In Dallas? Oh, y'all live right around the corner. <laughs> that's, right. that's right around the corner. Ah, okay, let me ask you this question. Where you work at? I'm not working right now. You're not working? Oh, you work at home then. Uh, where you work at? Um, I just resigned from the teacher. I'm opening my own preschool now. Oh, God. Yeah. Woo! 
Church, y'all heard that? Add it to your prayer list that God will just uh, open up doors for and that he'll move things out of the way that will hinder it, okay? Because a lot of times when you start putting it out there, the devil will get just as busy as he can. And so we're going to pray that y'all strength and, and God, and we're going to pray that it works out and be favorable to you. Just want you to remember in the message today, keep God first. All right, all right. Give God a hand clap. Bless us out of here. Bless us out of here. May God be with you.